Welcome to the Scoop 100. It's Tuesday. The bomb has dropped on Michigan. The first bomb. Uh, there's going to be a nuke coming, but this is a big day uh, for what we've been talking about. A lot of guys got smashed, and a lot of those guys took off. They saw the tea leaves coming. So, good day for the Bucks. And a couple of Buckeyes entered the transfer portal. Dallin Hayden, Cedric Hawkins are uh, officially off the roster. Uh, and there's going to be some shopping for Ohio State. Uh, there's some big rumor names, maybe Keon Keeley, some of these guys that are might be sniffing around. So we're going to get into all that. Kermani McLean also entered the number one corner in the country from a year ago. Uh, so we're going to talk about all that very, excuse me, quickly here. Uh, as always, we appreciate you guys uh, kicking it, tuning in with us. Again, I know you guys have been waiting on the save. A very good day for us. Uh, again, Nevada is going to break down what everything means about one on one today. Today is just... The first shell, this is not the nuke. The nuke is coming, but it confirmed everything that we believed that was coming, uh, including what Jim Harbaugh did with not complying and speaking with the uh, NCA, which is a huge no-no when you're in these uh, situations. So we're going to break all that down. As always, if you guys enjoy the show, please leave us a like, click subscribe, also click that little alert bell. Uh, big show tonight. Again, it is great being here. It's awesome that you guys are here with us. This is going to be a big show because you guys make it one. All of our super chats go to pay it forward. Uh, we're actually going to do uh, some work with a first responder series uh, pretty quick here. Uh, I talked to a member of the Scoop family. I'm going to give him a call uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, you know who you are, so we're going to get into that all. It's going to be actually fantastic. So I'm excited to uh, expand what we do to help people uh, that take care of us. Uh, stand up for your country. Again, we're proud patriots. I was very pleased with Andy Joe Taylor singing the national anthem to start off our uh, our. Uh, Saturday afternoon, uh, it was outstanding. So I appreciate all you uh, guys that made it out, guys and gals that made it out on Saturday. Uh, this is going to be another great show, and we're going to have a, another Scoop Meetup very, very soon here. So I appreciate all of you guys and girls that showed up. Uh, and if you guys didn't make it, we're going to have another one soon. It's going to be an absolute blast. That being said, bringing my good friend at Nevada. Nevada, um, we've been on the Michigan thing, I think, longer than anybody. That was something that really uh, has been something that's been huge for us. Uh, your thoughts on what went down today um, with the Cheeseburger Gate, COVID recruiting infractions, uh, a lot of interesting stuff. Uh, all, I believe all of the coaches are gone because they saw the sanction, the recruiting sanctions coming. Uh, but what are your thoughts on the events that transpired today? Well, today was a, a great day if you're an Ohio State fan. Uh, from our perspective, everything came out exactly as we were told it was going to. I mean, almost to to the uh, to the nth degree, you know. Michigan today basically split themselves off from Jim Harbaugh. Jim Harbaugh chose to not cooperate with the NCAA on this initial investigation. You have to remember, there's two different investigations. I know it's hard to keep track of all the stuff, but we'll try to break it down slowly for everybody because I know, I know it's hard, and um, because there's so many infractions, so many violations that they do get confusing. But the first one was Michigan was cheating during the COVID period in terms of having the illegal workouts, illegal contact, people on campus, um, illegal benefits to players during COVID when, when COVID was supposed to be a no contact period. So when Harbaugh was contacted about that, but then said, he lied about it, lied to the NCAA investigators. So the infractions themselves were level two infractions. And for those level two infractions, Michigan got hit today with, uh, you know, three years of probation, a fine, some recruiting restrictions, one year show causes for all the people that were involved in this. Um, so, you know, considering that this is a series of, uh, you know, really not something that didn't go to competitive advantage, level two infractions, uh, a I would say middle to medium to high um, side of the punishment scale for Michigan on the level two infractions. Now, the Harbaugh side of this, the line to the NCAAs, which immediately became a level one infraction, has not been adjudicated yet. And that was the one thing that was split off from the Michigan thing. I, I fully expect him to get, as a result of this, five-year show cause, six-year show cause. And you may say, well, what's the difference? What does it matter? He's not coming back to the uh, to college football. Well, a couple things. One. I, I am of the opinion, I may have a minority view on this, I do believe Goodell will do something to the Chargers, even if it's symbolic, a fine, take away a draft pick, do something, because this is so egregious. And, and, and Harbaugh so obviously burned down the Michigan program and then left 
um, to try to you know beat the tax collector on this thing. So I think that there's going to be something come from the uh, from the NFL on that. But more importantly, this is Ohio State fans. This all provides the predicate for lack of institutional control because today Michigan admitted that they didn't do enough to monitor what was going on to uh, deter these types of violations going. So Michigan is being set up for a lack of institutional control charge, as well as a repeat offender charge, because the second level one violation has fallen within a five year period of the first one. And so now you're, they're staring down two level one infractions. The Harbaugh thing's gonna be bad. When they hand out the punishments for Harbaugh, it's gonna be bad. And that's just for the, that's just for the it was just the cheeseburger side of it. The Stallions, Biggest cheating scandal, on-field cheating scandal in the history of college football. One, I mean that that one just it, it just checks every box. It checks going to competitive advantage, um, integrity of the game, uh, lying to NCAA, uh, you know, you know, violation of multiple NCAA statutes involving you know multiple levels of Michigan personnel, and it dovetails nicely with this first one because. It, 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 it basically demonstrates a Michigan athletic program that's out of control. And so today I thought was exactly what we thought it would be. Um, and I think that, you know, when these next punishments come down and they dovetail into this thing, you know, that will be the ultimate hammer. Now, at the end of the day, I'm not the NCAA. So I, I can't, I can't bet my life um, in terms of what it's going to be, but we talked to a lot of people this is coming out exactly the way that we thought it was going to come down. And if you think about it from, from the NCAA standpoint, if you give somebody three years probation for, you know, you know, Ill illegal contact during a COVID period or, uh, you know, having a, a, re a recruit on campus, then what do you give for a, a, a sign scaling, advanced scouting, electronic surveillance scandal that covers multiple years you know, 38 different games and everything from the head coach to the assistant coach to all the coordinators um, up and down the, the uh, as, as well as an illegal money trail. So, you know, how do you adjudicate that? And I think any right thinking person um, looks at that and says, oh, man, this is going to be really bad. I mean, this is going to be really bad. And, and it's, it's been fun watching the, uh, the Michigan fans that they kind of twist themselves into pretzels trying to explain how, see, I told you it wasn't going to be anything. And it's like, guys, you guys just got smoked for level two infractions. You know, wait till, wait till the big stuff hits you. Um, it's, it, I, I guess I, it was, I thought it was a glorious day. I couldn't wait to pot. I couldn't wait to talk about it. I couldn't wait to get on the board and go on this because I, I love watching Michigan kind of twist in the wind. I love the sort of Damocles hanging over their head, waiting to fall. And uh, it's about to, they're about to enter the nuclear winter in uh, Ann Arbor, and, and, uh, and I can't wait. So the good day for Ohio State fans. Well, the thing I can't believe is like when they're saying that, oh, because again, you know, we get tagged and everything because we've broken every part of the Michigan story, every, uh, every twist and turn, we were the ones that broke it. Again, that was a big thing that helped vault us ahead of basically every major website in the country in terms of accuracy and inside information is the fact that, we had all this and we knew it was going to be bad. And this is the COVID stuff from 2020. I mean, again, I, again, I know like it seems like it was yesterday that we had COVID and everyone's locked up, but like this is 2020's rolling. This isn't the advanced scouting stallions, Harbaugh, the money trail, uh, who's paying for everything, you know, who's paying off, you know, Connor Sons is making, you know, 30 grand a year or whatever he's making. And he pays off his $500,000 house in like a year. Like, where is all that coming from? You know, that is what's going to be fascinating and juicy and uh, the nuke. Because, again, those guys knew what was going on. Again, those coordinators, if you've been in a major organization, if you guys have been in a any type of organization, you guys have been in a school district, you guys have been part of a sports team, the guy who's the head guy in charge isn't listening to, like, what the janitor has to say about how to run the squad run the team run whatever but you know if the janitor all of a sudden says hey this is a way where we can siphon money or save money or do something illegal that can make you look really good then he might listen to you and again that's what like cutter says is basically a glorified janitor at michigan 
And he had the ear of Sharon Moore, who's going to get smoked. Uh, the, the Harbaugh's left. Um, you know, Mike McDonald left. I mean, the, everybody like took off because they saw, uh, man, this is really good stuff. But this is in a, this is one of those ones where it's like it's like one of those capers when you watch uh, the the blackjack movie. Um, we have the Harvard guys go and take Vegas and they counting cards or whatever. Like it's one of those ones where these coaches all knew that if they stuck around and got greedy and tried to just milk every possible cent out of the casinos, eventually they're going to get whacked. Those guys do get out of there while the getting's good, get to the NFL where you're not affected as much by a show cause. Now again, I think Roger Goodell in general smacks these guys when they, uh, when they've inflicted severe harm on a, institution and then they try to flee the nfl roger goodell kind of like backfills the discipline but you know these guys do what they were doing and again that's what's funny is people are like oh well you said it was going to be bad i'm like well what what they got today was really bad and then what's coming down the pike uh when they're going to have uh, you know the repeat offender status and uh, uh frankly much much more severe um issues uh it's going to be fantastic i think because because i'm an ohio state fan and you know, again, people can say, oh, it's nothing's happening. It's taking forever. But this ruling came down today, like this bargain came down today from issues that happened in 2020. We're talking about issues that were nailed last year in 2023. So again, the NCAA moves like a tugboat uh, that's anchored to the ground at the bottom of the ocean. Uh, but eventually it does get stuff done. So this is why when people say, what's the timetable? What's the time frame? What's it happening? How are we supposed to know when something randomly comes down during spring ball today that happened four years ago in 2020? So, um, yeah, but when it happens, it's going to be uh, fantastic. And again, I've said it a million times, and you guys are very smart to pay attention to this program because, again, we've smoked everybody on this story. It's going to be bad. And people that say that it's not going to be bad are delusional. They're Michigan fans. Um but I don't want this looming over my program. And again, there's a reason why every single coach, except for Sharon Moore, left the program. I mean, even Mike Hart, Mike Hart left the program. He doesn't even have a job. Like he left a job where he's probably making 500 grand a year to go make zero grand a year. So again, I don't know what he did, but you know, all these other guys went to the NFL. They went to the LA Chargers. They went to the Seattle Seahawks. Uh, they got out of Dodge because, again, I wouldn't want to be there for it. Um, you know, and again, Jim Harbaugh is literally the opposite of Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer, when he left Ohio State and then he took a couple years off, then he went to the Jaguars, he hired literally nobody of importance. He hired Ryan Saper and Anthony Schlegel, who you know, Schlegs didn't even work at Ohio State. And Saper was like the 85th guy on the roster, the last guy on the roster. So he didn't even matter in the program. Uh, and those are the guys he took. He didn't take Pantone. He didn't take Mickey Marotti. He didn't take any of the coaches uh, because he didn't want to disrupt Ryan. He didn't want to stab Ryan in the back. Jim Harbaugh, on the other hand, I've said this a million times, he took everybody. He was the Grinch that took the hoo hash, took the wires off the wall. I mean, he's like, he left nothing but the wires in Schembechler Hall. Uh, you know, because he, he, like I said, he took everybody. Like, when you take the strength coach, coordinators the position coaches like that means not only do they want to leave and leave the team that's the defending national champions they know what's coming and that's why they're all fleeing and you notice none of those guys took jobs in college football none of them went to georgia none of them went to michigan or excuse me uh none of them went to um georgia or bama or texas or ohio state when we had openings none of those guys went to college jobs they all went to the league so they could escape the show clause. So again, it's going to be uh, fascinating. Uh, Nevada, how do you see this thing turning out? And again, how good of a day is this? Because again, I'm I'm feeling great right now. Oh, it's a great day, and you know, I mean, look, t today was ne today was never going to be the big mama jama. That was you know, anybody say that, that we said that today was never. This is the COVID stuff. This is the. Like you said, this this is from infractions from four years ago, and the big part of the story was never what they did because I, I I never thought what they did back then in COVID was that big of a deal, um, but lying to the NCAA, what Harbaugh did, now that's a big deal, not cooperating with NCAA and part of an investigation, now that's a big deal. 
Now, now, now you're putting yourself into a different thing. I mean, Tennessee got whacked, but they got lauded for uh, exemplary cooperation from their, you know, from the staff and from the university. With thing, Michigan is taking exactly the opposite tact on this, and it's just gonna it's gonna cost them dearly. Um, this this national championship that they had. Look, we all know that. Look, we we all remember the national championships. We can look back on it fondly, but. Man, you know, for me, I don't know many people that are sitting there going, you know, I don't really care what happens in 2024 for Ohio State football because we won the national championship back in 2015. And um, so, you know, I'm good. You know, everything in college football is always forward looking. It's always what's going to be next. How's the team going to be next? I mean, that's the way it was the day after the season. You're always thinking about, well, what's next year going to look like? What are we going to do for that? And man, for Michigan, you're just looking at, they haven't even gotten to the bad stuff yet. They haven't even gotten to the vacated wins. They haven't even got to the postseason bans. They haven't got to the recruiting restrictions. I mean, they haven't got to any of that stuff yet. And and their recruiting is already in complete disarray. Their staff clearly, I mean, I don't know if, it's, if they're drinking because they have to be up in Ann Arbor, which I'm, I'm, part of me understands. I think if I was in Ann Arbor all the time or something like that, that I'd want to self-medicate as well because – that is a, just a nasty place to live, and um, but you know for the fans, the the fans are continuing to delude themselves that nothing's going to happen, everything's going to be okay. And you know, I liken it today on the board to it's like whistling past the graveyard. You know, you do that whenever you hear somebody whistling, you know they're really nervous, but they're trying to convey that they're not. It's like it's a tell. It's one of the ultimate tells in poker when somebody's trying to. Oh no, no, I'm not nervous at all. Oh yeah. So the more that they scream about how this is nothing and nothing's going to happen. I, I know they know. Deep down, they all know. They know they cheated. They know they got caught. They know that uh, it was a bad time to get caught because you've already been in the middle of one investigation, and now you're in your second investigation. And uh, the NCAA is desperate to make an example out of somebody to show relevance and show their ability to police college football and to show that there's still a role for them in this new world order of college football and Michigan, it just, it, it, they just happen to be the one, you know, timing is everything and it's their time in the barrel and they're coming up and the NCAA is going to whack a mole them back to the stone age when this whole thing comes down. And uh, it, it, it's well-deserved It's well, just because the cheating, what you think about what they did, like I said, the first, we're, we always try to be fair on this show. The, the, the COVID stuff really wasn't that big of a deal. I mean, it was, it was, yeah, they should get some punishment for it, but it really wasn't that big of a deal. But man, the line to the NCAA, you know, that's that's a big deal. You know, that's something that you know we've we've had issues with that with Har, the, you know, what Harbaugh did, where he was you know, directly lying as opposed to signing off on a sheet saying he did. Is that the same thing as what Trestle did? Well, Trestle got fired for it. Harbaugh, they were offering him an extension. So it just shows you, you know, where Michigan's moral code and moral compass is on all this stuff. And then you throw in the 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 on but the on field cheating stuff, the stallion stuff, is the worst thing I've ever seen. It's 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 the worst. I mean, short of bribing officials, it's the worst thing that I've ever seen. And and the punishment needs to fit the crime. I thought the punishment fit the crime today. But I thought the NCAA did a nice, fair, balanced job on that. And uh, and I think you know when the second one comes down, they'll do a similarly good job. And that'll involve nuking Michigan. And, and uh, that's the way it should be. Yeah, I agree. I think it's uh, it's going to be dramatic because they were so brazen, they were so sloppy, they were so arrogant with how they executed everything, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be a rough day. I mean, Michigan's going to get hammered. It's going to be a great day for us, but for those guys, it's like the leaders and the best are about to be smoked, and I'm very excited for it. I think it's going to be great for Ohio State. I think it's going to be great for all the teams that were wronged by them again. Greg Shiano called it out in a po- or in a halftime press conference. James Franklin called it out. You know, the thing I tell people is like, when teams do that, they beat teams. You know, Michigan beat teams that they shouldn't have beat the last three years, and it costs coaches their jobs, head coaches, assistant coaches, uh, athletic directors, players lose. I mean, it's one of those things where it, it upsets the whole food chain because they cheated. So again, it's no different than if you go into the Wynn or the Cosmopolitan or some casino in Vegas and you try to steal their money. Go try to do that. Go have some high tech, uh, high jinx thing. You guys have all seen casino before. 
Uh, how did it end for the dude that was cheating at the tables? Uh, got his head put into a vice. So that's kind of what they're going to do to Michigan. Because again, it all comes down to money. And when you mess with somebody's money, especially when it's the Big Ten and big, you know, and the NCAA and the integrity of the game, again, that's something where, you know, in the era of online gambling and gambling me everywhere, point shaving, uh, there's nothing that the NCAA will work harder at or will come down harder on than smacking people who violate the integrity of the game. And that's what Michigan did. Michigan violated the integrity of the game. They literally cheated to beat teams, you know, and that cost people, uh, you know, money, uh, you know, gambling. It costs uh, people jobs. And again, maybe you don't care about gambling. Maybe you don't care about coaches getting fired, but the NCAA does. I mean, again, because as soon as they lose the integrity of the game, then it does then a billion dollar enterprise folds immediately. So again, they are going to protect it. And when they under uncover everything, they're going to smash Michigan with penalties. And people that don't believe that they're just dumb. They don't pay attention to what the real world looks like. They don't, under, they don't understand the power of money, the power of integrity in sports. I mean, that is, you know, when you, when you want to look at the biggest scandals in the history of sports, what does it always involve? Cheating, doping, spying you know like lance like lance armstrong the russian olympic teams uh the 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 black Sox. you know all the biggest scandals in the history of sports all inv involve some sort of variance or some sort of cheating scandal uh go watch icarus you know which is one of the greatest documentaries ever made on netflix about uh uh the russian doping scandal like i mean those are humongous deals like russia got suspended from the olympics for multiple years for cheating out and out cheating and that's what Michigan did, you know. So again, you know, it was maybe it wasn't a performance enhancing drug, but if you tell everybody where the play is going to go, that's just as good. So I mean, again, the NCAA is going to smash these guys. I I'm happy they are because again, I like good, fair competition, good, clean competition. That's what we all want. We want when our teams take the field, they play each other. May the best team win, not the team that has. Uh, you know, that knows that can read the, the signals or knows the cards or whatever. Um, because again, that's, it's unethical and the NCAA is going to protect that. I promise you. And so is the big 10. Uh, and again, that's why those guys all ran again, Michigan knew what they were doing was wrong. They sold their souls to the devil because they were getting smoked every year by Ohio state. And then magically they won a few times again, when it, when a team, again, it's just like when a card player all of a sudden becomes a little too hot or when like, again, when us integrity gets involved and they say something kind of stings here with Michigan, where all of a sudden they're getting really good and we have no idea why, like when stuff, you know, when, when numbers are, don't fit the pattern anymore, because numbers are very predictable, especially in the gambling world, in the world of sports, when all of a sudden someone gets really good, really quick, um, maybe it's because of a coaching change. Maybe it's because of a big donor or maybe it's because they're cheating, you know? And again, they didn't change their coach. They had the same coach that stunk. They didn't change their players. They had the pl same players that stunk. And magically, they got really good. So they, they they dug down into it and they said, ooh, these guys are cheating in a very severe manner. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts on that before we dive into uh, the Super Chats? Well, I just think people have to hearken back. I don't, uh, you know, think back about what happened last year during the season. During the season, the Big Ten stepped in, initiated the major sanctions clause, suspended Harbaugh for three games. I mean, this all happened during the season in real time. That's never happened before. I mean, I, I think we were also kind of caught up in the whole thing that now when you get a chance to take a step back and look at that, you realize just, wow, th this was really bad. This was really, really bad. And, and without precedent, and the punishments were without precedent, and the, their attempted remedies were, were without precedent. And that was before they even concluded the investigation. And so now that the NCAA has kind of you know, had a chance to kind of catch their breath, re-interview people, get a kind of a, a fuller picture of what was going on, um, yeah, I, I think you just realize, now Michigan's clearly gonna try to hang this all on Harbaugh. They're gonna try to say, Harbaugh did this, this was Harbaugh, punish Harbaugh, don't punish the innocent kids. That's going to that's gonna be their story. And, you know, for the, 
the, the interesting thing is in the Big Ten, you know, while the NCAA, the ultimate, uh, you know, the ultimate responsibility falls with the head coach in the, in the NCAA, when, in the Big Ten, the ultimate responsibility is with the institution. So it'll be really interesting to see how they kind of hang this stuff down here because the NCAA is going to look at this and kind of go, we've got a situation where, you know, Michigan's trying to hang this on Harbaugh. Harbaugh's gone, you know, off to the the, the NFL. We have no direct way to get him. Um, they cheated for so long, gained such a huge competitive advantage. But it's also in the shadow of this other cheating scandal that they did, this other uh, illegal recruiting, illegal benefit scandal. This is lack. This is lack of institutional control, and we have to step in and do it. And yes, there's going to be innocents that are going to be casualties in this. But you know, sometimes in a war, innocent people get smacked. And um, as far as I'm concerned, there are no innocents on the Michigan team. They all knew. They are all involved. But even guys that are just coming here to Michigan, you know, maybe this is why they've only got three recruits right now because people know uh, what's heading down the down the pike for them. But uh, I thought the Big Ten, you know, the, the Big Ten's actions last year were, were so crazy, so without precedent. And go back again. If, you, if you're, you've got a, you know, 30 seconds, you want something entertaining, Google Tony Petiti's letter to Michigan and read the letter and then put it in the context of what you see today from the NCAA and then ask yourself what type of punishment you think it's going to be. And it's, it's going to be bad. And, and, it, and like I said, I'm, I'm all about it. I think that's the uh, – the fair ultimate punishment for it. And uh, I think they're going to get theirs. I totally agree. Uh, let's get into these super chats. Tony Turley. What is up, brother? Thanks for being a hall of fame member. Thank you for being a scoop ultra member. Thank you for the 20 guys. Whom exactly got the winner show clause in this violation. Just want to be sure. Nevada. OH. I O. They don't, I think they kept it anonymous. They kept the six. I'm sure Jim Harbaugh is one of them. Cause he's the guy that bought the cheeseburger. No, he, he's not. I don't think oh. Harbaugh is one of the one. I think the, the Harbaugh punishment is completely separate. Now, maybe you, you could be right. He could be one of the six that have given him a one year for the cheeseburger stuff. I, you know, I don't. I I don't know. I think I, I they didn't name who the people were that were involved in terms of it. So I, I we only be speculating. And I don't know. I don't know, Kirk, if you know the names. Um, oh, I, I I don't know the names. I just I know the person that was eating the cheeseburger. So I, I was assuming it was I'm assuming it was the the coach who was there eating the cheeseburger. Harbaugh was there eating a cheeseburger. The offensive line coach is there eating a cheeseburger. So again, and the offensive line coach, I believe, believe was Sean Moore. So right. uh, actually no in, no in twenty it wasn't Sean Moore. Who was it? No. They moved on. They moved from Sean. Yep. Uh but I, I'm just saying, like it was the line coach. And Harbaugh. So I, I don't know who the other ancillary parts were, but uh, yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Let me look at the 2020 stuff. So I'm blanking right now on who would have been their line coach then. I should know this. Um, yeah, but it's uh, Michigan coaching stuff. But yeah, they, they didn't release that, so I don't know. And again, it would just be me guessing. This is, they still had Gaddis then. Um, God, it wasn't Ed, was it? No. It's funny when you look back at their old their old stuff, it was oh my god, it was Ed Warner. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if Ed got us Joe Cause or not, but you know, in, in, in 2020, the coaching staff was Jim Harbaugh, Don Brown, Josh Gaddis. Uh Gaddis was the uh, offensive coordinator. Jay Harbaugh was running backs coach. Ben McDaniels was quarterbacks coach, Sean Moore, tight ends coach. Sean Nua, D-line coach, Chris Partridge, safeties, Ed Warner, offensive line, Mike Zordich was corners, and Ben Herbert was the strength coach. So, again, like, almost all of now, those guys were gone. Go ahead. Now, now, now I, don't, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, yeah, I mean, Michigan made a big deal today about wanting to get these punishments going so they could kind of start the clock on this stuff for the people, which would indicate to me – that these guys have to be still existing staff members. So who of that list is? Still, I mean, obviously Sharon Moore is still in the staff. He, who else no, he, is still he, on staff? He, he, he's it. That's it. Yeah. I, he, he, no, I, I, I swear, I'm, I'm like, so now the current staff is Sharon Moore is now the head coach. Kurt Campbell is the OC that used to be Gaddis. Wink Martindale is the DC that used to be Don Brown. Tony Alfred is running backs. Obviously, he was at Ohio State. 
Ron Bellamy is receivers. He wasn't there. J.B. Brown wasn't there. Steve Kasula, that used to be Jay Harbaugh, um, wasn't there. Brian G. Marie, uh, D. Running game. I mean, you got to remember, like they had you know, the one guy get the DUI and everybody else. Like Lamar Morgan. I mean, the only guy who's still there from that year is Sean Moore. That's it. So, well, again, we had, we had heard that that Sean Moore was getting a show cause. That's interesting <laughs> that he could have been gotten a show cause on the first one. And that's, uh, he, that's he, very, he, very he's the only guy from that, that same stuff. I mean, I, and, and again, I don't, if there's some ancillary, you know, uh, personnel guy or something, but I'm talking top 10 coaches as in the 10 guys that are countable. The only guy left is Sean. What's that? Yeah. I mean, that's great. That's crazy turnover. So I don't know, but again, I just speculate based on who I know was there. Because, like, who would you think would get – if there's six show causes and you're, like, doling them out, well, it's probably the people that are there, they're involved in it, they're actively participating in it. And, again, I'm not an attorney, but, yeah, I've I've played one on TV and I've watched them on TV shows and I've watched Game of Thrones and I watched the Clue movie from the 70s. And it's, like, to me, I can deductively reason who I think would be there. But, uh, Tony, that's your job because you're the attorney. So you'd imagine – you know, if the glove uh, doesn't fit, uh, Sean Moore must have to quit, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> Kevin McQuaid, thank you for the deuce. Appreciate you, man. Will it take four years to resolve the sign stealing? I don't think so because it's such a, I mean, it's such a, a high profile case, you know, and it's like, that's the one everyone's watching. So I, I imagine, you know, when, when the eye of Sauron is on you and the whole world is watching how does the NCAA act when their integrity is being threatened? Um, I think it'll be quicker. Uh, Nevada, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, well, just you have to remember, though, even quick, even if, if we get a response tomorrow from the NCAA, or I shouldn't say a response, a, a letter of allegation too, then there's a response period. Then there's a response to the response, and then they can set up a hearing. So, you know, I, I just don't, you know, I just don't know because – Look, we're looking at four. You know, we're pushing four years on the COVID thing. Do I think it's going to take four years? I wouldn't think so. But you know, I, you know timing these things is always dicey, and it just, it's just it's unknowable. Anything we say on that is a guess. But I, my educated guess, based on what I've been told, is no, it will not take as long as the COVID thing. But you know, we will see. Yeah, I. Uh... I agree with you. I don't think it'll take as long just because of what's at stake. And, you know, I mean, people want to know what's going to happen with this because those guys all skate and get out of Dodge. So I think it'll be quicker than the uh, the cheeseburger gate. But with the NCAA, it's hard to predict anything. That's why we, we stay out of that business. People, again, we're very respectful. People say, when's the hammer going to fall? I'm like, well, with the NCAA, it's just, you know, they're like the federal government when it, when it comes to efficiency. Like, it's just not their... Because they don't have any, they don't have any oversight, and they don't have any need to be efficient, so they can take their sweet time. ZZM, uh, appreciate you, my man. It was great seeing you again on Saturday. I say that every night. Uh, thanks for being an ultra member. Thanks for the five. Ooh, I love this idea. What do you say about a massive get together when the sanctions come out to celebrate? They stole so much from us with their cheating. I won't leave that up to me. The only person that can make that decision is Doreen. So if Doreen wants to have a massive get together to celebrate Michigan getting smoked, then we'll do it. If Doreen does not want to have a massive get together, then we will not do it, but it's all on Doreen. So, and if she's not in here, which I think she is in here because she's always in here, but if she is not, if Doreen is not in here, then we will not have a massive get together. But if she says she wants to have one, then we will do it. So it's all on Doreen. So all of you guys ask Doreen if she wants to have a massive get together when it all goes down in Nevada, when the sanctions drop, should we have another massive uh, Buffalo Wild Wings get together? I'm I'm all about that, man. I will uh, I will fly in <laughs> for that. Then I, you know, I'll, I'll I'll jump on a Greyhound bus and, and uh, drive in for that thing. Planes, too, trains, but, and automobiles style. Pl- planes, trains, and automobiles, man. I will uh, I will I will get there one way or another. I will get there for that because. Uh, yeah, I, I just, I just, I think just the, what Michigan did was so wrong. And again, I, we try to be fair on the show. I didn't feel that way about cheeseburger. I, you know, I get be punished, but 
not that big a deal. But the the the, the sign stealing, electronic surveillance, advanced scouting, that's that's bad. That 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 was really 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 bad. That was a, a move born out of desperation, um, and it cost a lot of people. It cost a lot of innocent people. It cost it cost C.J. Stroud maybe two Heisman's and a legacy at Ohio State and. Um, I think it's horrible, and I think they need to be nuked back to the Stone Age on that one, and uh, um, that couldn't happen to a nicer bunch of guys. You are muted, Mr. Barton. Doreen, I apologize. Uh, I was trying to get my fingers in the right spot on the screen. Look there. I could go this way, this way, this way. There we go. Oh, flip it this way. I'm trying to get Doreen uh, pointing at her thing because she wants to do uh, a get together if the hammer falls. So Doreen has spoken. Let when? it be written. Uh, the second it happens, the yeah, second when? it comes down, you're getting when? on the not Greyhound if, bus. When I'm getting on the Greyhound yes. bus and heading out. Yes. I yes. Am. 68 hours from Los Angeles on the Greyhound bus. Uh, I'm doing it. I'll take a Amtrak. Take like an Amtrak. Like, like an Amtrak. Take, yes, do an Amtrak. They've got great soup. Uh, it's, 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 it's processed. Like you're going to the moon. It's like astronaut ice cream with hot water in it. Oh my God. I, we, we took it. I mean, my mom, who I love happy retirement to my mom. It's her retirement party night. I skipped it to podcast. God bless her. She didn't come down to see me, but she literally, uh, we went Amtrak from Canton, Ohio to Florida. And you want to talk about hell. That was hell. <laughs> it was, I mean, it was terrible. Did it take, oh like, did it take like nine, nine days? It took like 30 hours to get from Canton. <laughs> I'm like, why in the, why? I mean, like flying, it takes two hours. And a lot of you, I mean, a lot of you guys are snowbirds. A lot of you guys go from Ohio to Fort Myers. My mom, who I love to death, but she's an idiot. She's like, well, let's get on the train <laughs> for 30 hours to go to Florida. And I'm like. This is literal hell. I mean, you could drive a car there in 16 and a half hours to Fort Myers, but I mean, it was, you know, the train stopped and I don't know if we hit a cow and we're eating this terrible food. I'm like, oh my God, got to change trains. I'm like, but she, she meant well, but it hardened me up. And it also, it taught me that, you know, I don't want my kids to turn into serial killers. So I'm going to actually let them fly on direct flights and not have them get on a plane and be angry for the rest of their lives. But oh my God, the Amtrak. Ooh, take me back to Delaware County Jail. I'd rather be there than that. <laughs> uh, Quinn Tucky, thank you for the 20. Appreciate you, brother. Uh, I'd like to point out that the Michigan defense is the same defense as the <laughs> instructions defense. Kind of the same defense the soldiers of Nuremberg had. Just following orders is on the docket next. I love the questions we get on the show. Like, I'm serious. Um Nevada, your thoughts on Michigan having the same defense as the soldiers of Nuremberg <laughs> and the insurrectionists? I, I love this show so much. This is amazing. Well, I mean, that's that is the playbook they're going to use. They they were they were just following orders. They didn't know Stallions was a rogue agent. Harbaugh was a you know, desperate guy doing it. Nobody knew anything. It's like the Sergeant Schultz. If you watched uh, Hogan's Heroes, you know the. That I know nothing like that's going to be it's, yeah. that it's the, it's the Sergeant Schultz defense. And, um, you know, it's, it, it's just typical Michigan arrogance in their hubris. And, um, it, like I said, that's what makes today so great today. Today's so great because Michigan thinks it's the end and it's just the beginning. And, uh, that's, that's the beautiful thing. They're, they're like, we won, we won. The war's over. We're going. It's like, guys, no, it's, it's the, it's the top of the first inning guys. So, um, don't, silly Michigan fans, uh, you've you've already lost, and you don't, and you think you think the game's over, but you've already lost, guys. Come on. Oh my God, I I love uh, the Michigan fans are my heroes, man, because they're they're so proud of themselves. But it's going to be really really bad, and I'm really really excited about it. Um, the Nuremberg defense, I love the like the when you say the the sharp, the Sergeant Schultz, I know nothing. I'm not going to tell you what group of people that cover Ohio State football for a living that reminds me of, but you can imagine in terms of I know absolutely nothing. I break nothing. <laughs> I do nothing. But that's exactly what it reminds me of. And shout out to our girl Sue. Sue's not on here as much as I wish she was. I, I love Sue. And you guys all know Sue. And our, our girl, our girl, our girl Sue sold these guys up the river. 
and said that Pete Thamel was reporting that Will Johnson was in the portal today. So shout out Sue. And they read that and they actually didn't double check it. So, hey, we can't all uh, have it uh, correct, I guess. We always I have mean, it I first. Mean, I, I mean, here's the pro tip. If you see <laughs> a Twitter thing called Pete oh my God. Toe, if it's yeah. Pete Thamletoe, you know it's not the real Pete <laughs> it's Thamletoe. Not, that's well. not the real. Pete Thamletoe? I'm like, oh, my God. Yeah. And they went with it. I was like, and they said that uh, on their show. I was like, oh, my God. Uh, so that was a bad. morning show, too, man. So, hey, we won't even know where most is being passed around at that hour. But, hey, it is what it is. Um, oh, my God. Just so dumb. Uh, Lee McAllister, thank you for the five. Appreciate you, man. Just a bomb. Not a massive bomb. Nevada OH. Massive IO. I don't, yeah, massive to me is the next round. This was, uh, this was like the opening round of artillery. The next round is what's going to get ugly. I'm telling you, that's what I'm excited about. Uh, Nevada, do you agree with that? Well, yeah. And, and, and we have to remember the only reason or one of the primary reasons why the next round can be massive is because this was the predicate. You have to have these initial uh, transgressions, this initial uh, level one infractions, this initial investigation to trigger the, LO, the the lack of institutional control, the repeat offender. So this was necessary to kind of it was kind of a bridge to get the next one. But this is what we this is exactly what we told you was going to happen. And I can tell you down to the Michigan separating from Harbaugh, we all knew this was going to happen. You knew they're going to try to throw Harbaugh under the bus, and it was Jim all along and. We didn't really mean to be offering him a supporting him or offered him an extension, which I told you guys at the time. It was all kabuki theater. They wanted him gone. A lot of people at Michigan they, they wanted appeal to the crazies. So they're like, no, we're trying to keep our but they wanted him gone. This is a guy that they gave a fifty percent pay cut to early in his tenure at Michigan. He's a weird dude. Even though he could win, they wanted him out of there. And now he's gone. Now they're going to hang everything bad that's happened in Michigan. They're going to hang around his neck. And uh, it's just going to be great to watch them eat their own. The typical Michigan behavior. Uh, great. Tony Turley, thank you for the 20. Uh, thanks for being an ultra. Thanks for being a Hall of Fame member. Missed you on Saturday. A lot of people want to meet Tony Turley, so you got to get to the next one. Do you guys think Fielding Yost is a Michigan man anymore up in heaven? Probably not. I mean, because Fielding Yost is actually a really good coach. I mean, he's he's not used to the scum they've had the last few years. Uh, I doubt it. Did you know Yost and Saban are from the same ho hometown? Uh, Nevada OH? I O. Oh. I'd assume that's somewhere in West Virginia. I don't know where in West Virginia, but I know Nick Saban is from West Virginia. Um, Nevada, do you think that Fielding Yost is still a Michigan man? No, I think he, he. I think he's embarrassed. I, I. I think most. And it's funny because I have a few friends. I shouldn't say friends. I have a few acquaintances that are Michigan guys, and I'd say eighty percent of them are really embarrassed by this. There's like twenty percent that are just dumb, and it's coming up. But but eighty percent of them really are like, wow, this is just. It's it, it's kind of embarrassing now to be a Michigan fan and to be. Has anybody had a shorter honeymoon? Like you want to, after you win a national championship. You want to buy the gear and wear the thing and watch the game over again and go through all this stuff. Man, it ended quickly for Michigan. It ended in about, I'd say like, like 36 hours, it all ended. Everybody left. Recruiting went back into the toilet. NCAA's dropping the hammer. Um, it just, it, it got bad really, really quick. You know, how did that happen a little first, then all at once? And, uh, you know, I, I think most right-thinking Michigan fans are like, this was not worth it. This was not worth it to have no – if I, if I had no hope about Ohio State football, if I was, like, looking at the seasons going, man, 24 is going to be bad and 25 is going to be worse and 26 is going to really be bad, that would be so depressing, especially as you get older when you realize that yeah. you don't have you know, an infinite number of seasons left. To know that for the next 10 years you're going to be bad, man, that would I, I'd have to pick a new sport to start rooting for or something like that. But hey, what, 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 what sport would you start rooting for? Like UConn, like – basketball or something i'd go women's hockey i'd go women's hockey I'd, I'd become like a women's hockey fan and i'd travel around the country watching women's hockey games or what about like penn state <laughs> it could be or wisconsin <laughs> or wisconsin hey, quinnipiac 
I like it. Uh, <laughs> Choc- Chocolate Chip Scoochie, thank you for the deuce. Uh, how about a kicker in the portal? That'd be wonderful. It'd be nice. I don't. I have no idea why we don't have the best kicker in the United States of America kicking for Ohio State every single year. We have the most prolific offense in the country basically every year. We have a first-round quarterback basically every year. And our kickers suck, and they don't go to the NFL, and they miss critical kicks when we need them. And part of it's because our special teams coach sucked. And he, yeah, again, he he never should have been above an intern at Ohio State. And again, he's a he's a Division three level coach, which is fine. Again, I've I've known him for a long time. He was my intern when I worked there. And he's you know again, and he's a free agent right now, and there ain't nobody knocking his door down. So, um, but I don't know. I mean, if I was the coaches at Ohio State, I said, why don't we just go get one a kicker like Michigan has? Because Michigan's kicker two years ago uh, kicked at the Super Bowl this year for the 49ers. Hits fifty yard field goals and with regularity, I don't, I don't know. When's the last time we hit a fifty yard field goal? Do you know Nevada? Have we had, have we hit one in a long time? Well, yeah, we might have, but in terms of having that dominant kicker, that was just you know a force. That, you know, it's it's been a while, and it and it really shouldn't be that way. Um, you know, we especially not in the portal era. In the portal era, there's no excuse because you don't have to guess on a high school kicker and wonder how his game's going to translate to college. You can just go out and find some third or fourth year guy that's kicking them regularly at Miami of Ohio or, you know, Eastern Michigan or wherever and go, I, I, I know this guy can kick at the college level. I've seen him kick at the college level. Um, you know, he's you know, did 97% last year. Let's get him in Columbus. And there's, so there's really no excuse. I, I, I I'm completely at a loss. How do we can have anything but the best kicker at Ohio State? But somehow year in and year out, that's what we settle for. Well, because like we've had like like Sean Ner- like, again, like if you just look at our most field goals made, um honestly, if you guys want to laugh and see something hilarious, look at the statistics for most field goals made in Ohio State history. <laughs> I, I, so I did since 2000. So since like the Jim Tressler era. Nugent hit 72. Next closest is Noah Ruggles with 37. So obviously, you know, Nugent kicked for four years. I get that. Um, but it, it also shows you how much Tress kicked uh, instead of going for it on fourth down. Um, yeah, I'm, just, I'm looking at our kickers. So our top, you know, our 16 kickers since 2000, which is kind of the modern era, last 24 years. Nugent. No Ruggles, Nuremberger, Pretorius, Basil, Petri. I think he kicked in maybe one or two NFL games. Blake Heibel, Devin Barclay, Josh Houston, Dan Stoltz, Tyler Durbin, Jaden Fielding, Jack Willoughby, Dom DiMachico, Jake Seibert, Kyle Clinton. So in 25 years, we've had one NFL kicker. And I literally don't know how that's possible. When our offense has been prolific, our team's been great. And in the era of the transfer portal, how on earth do we not have an NFL kicker? I mean, you should you should have the best kicker in the country, especially with the portal. You know, because I mean, maybe you suck at evaluating kickers coming out of high school, but you can always find some guy in the portal. Again, the guy who's a preseason all American is at Miami of Ohio right now. So I don't know. I mean, I'm not against tampering. I might say, hey, do you want to come kick for a team that can win the national title or do you want to kick for a team that's going to come in seventh place in the MAC? Yeah, 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 but, call. But, but Kirk, to the point, you know, like, like if, if I ask you to evaluate how good a defensive lineman is coming from Eastern Michigan or something like that, like you could probably do a pretty good job on it, but it's not perfect because you're not exactly – knowing the level of competition, who he's playing with, what's the scheme, mm-hmm. how's everything going, right? But if I, I could ask you to evaluate a kicker and you oh could just God. look at his you could look at his numbers and go, <laughs> he didn't miss a kick under 50 yards last year. That th- there's no arguing with that. There's no there's no debate. It's 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 completely object. There's no subjectivity to that. So how can you, we not go out and find a great kicker? I just I just don't understand it. Well, I mean, that, that's my thing is like, you know, like, I mean, and Blake Heibel kicked a 55 yarder in 19 against Northwestern. So there's my answer to last 50 yard field goal. But it's like, it makes me sick the fact that we lost the national championship two years ago against Georgia because we couldn't hit a 47 yard field goal. Like, that's, that's insanity to me. Like, that's I, like, I actually think. 
I think it was 49, and it's a debate whether it was a 49 or 50, but I saw it for the interest of accuracy, I believe it was either 49 okay. or 50, because I did, I, I did look at it. I did look at that, yeah. Well, okay. But still. Okay. I, I, I'm, just I trying, mean, I'm just trying to... We, we, we that, strive that, for accuracy here on the show. That's, but, that's you know, fair. Your point, your point is 100% valid. No, yeah, but you're right. You're right. We, we want to be accurate around here, but... So I think his longest film goal of his career was 47 yards. So that was his range that I was told... Because I, I was told after that game that he'd never hit a, a field goal longer than I think forty seven. So maybe maybe that's what it was. So like whatever it was, it was it the, the the bottom line was the kick that he missed was outside of his range. So he missed a fifty yard field goal. Okay, so his range was forty seven. So now I have the story straight for the honor or for the uh, <laughs> the reason of accuracy. But it was like you know like if you say. Kirk, I'll give you a billion, gajillion dollars to go drive a 400-yard green. And I walk out to the tee box, and I'm like, I can't drive a, a, a ball 300 yards, but you want me to drive a 400-yard green? Like, okay, great. You know, I'll go try and do it or whatever. But, like, you know, there's got to be somebody that can do that or pay someone to do that for you. But, again, that's, uh, that's besides the point. But I just... It drives me nuts. Like Jake Moody was is like a he had like an all time rookie season this year for the 49ers. He was Michigan's kicker. And I mean he bangs, he's got a cannon for a leg. And we just never have that kicker that has like a cannon, like really since Nuge. And like I, I played for him and with Nuge, man, you know, and again, our offense sucked in 04. And thank God we had Nuge because Nuge could bang from inside of 60. I mean, he had a 55 yarder to win the game against Marshall, thank God. Because we easily could have lost to those guys at home and they would have burned the stadium down again. But I miss those days. Uh, Michael Jarrett, thank you for the 10. And thanks for being an ultra member as well. Appreciate you. What people does the scum up north uh, have over ESPN and why uh, not report on much or literally at all? Um, when we had Tattoo Gate, it was all over ESPN on repeat every day. It's BS. Well, more people care about Ohio State and our downfall than any other brand. Ohio State is the biggest brand in all of sports, and that's why people, when there's uh, a loss, when there's a uh, something like Tattoo Gate, it's literally round-the-clock coverage because people in Ohio care about sports more than any other place, I think, in the entire country. And I'm not – I mean, that might sound crazy, might sound like whatever, but pay attention to what Colin Cowherd, you know, he needles Baker Mayfield, Manziel – Pay attention to what ESPN talks about when they talk about when LeBron was with the Cavs. And that was all they talked about was LeBron with the Cavs. LeBron with the Lakers, nobody cares anymore. Uh, Ohio State is big business. The state of Ohio is big business because people in Ohio tune in and watch sports. Like, it's important to us. Like, we're, again, we're a Midwestern culture. We're tough. And we like to support our teams, whether it's the, you know, and again, it's, it's, it's the big teams. It's the Browns. Again, when Baker Mayfield get railed on my Colin all the time. It's the um, the Cavs when LeBron was here. Uh, and it's most importantly, Ohio State football. So those are the big brands. ESPN hates Ohio State football with a passion because they literally are in bed with the SEC. And again, that's not me being pie in the sky guy. That's not me being a tinfoil hot guy. It's the fact that literally they own the SEC network. They built the SEC network. So they want the SEC to beat Ohio State like a drum. And they want SEC dominance because that literally enhances the network that they built. You know, now on the flip, we have Fox and CBS who are team Ohio State because Ohio State carries the torch and the banner for the Big Ten basically every year, uh, except last year where actually Michigan stepped up and actually did something for once. So um, I, I think it's just because people don't really care about Michigan, um, especially, you know, with Jim Harbaugh being gone. Uh, you know, Sean Moore is kind of like a, a, like a limp turtle, like in the middle of the road on his back. Like people don't really care. He has no personality. I think if Harbaugh was there, it'd be a much bigger story. Uh, just because he's such an abrasive douchebag, but with Sharon being up there and just being kind of like a hapless douchebag, um, it's just not as compelling. You know, if urban, you know, if this was Ohio state and it was Ryan day and Terrell Pryor or you know, urban Meyer, Jim Trussell, Oh my God, it would be, they'd have, you know, campers out, out in front of the Woody Hayes, like they did when, when the tattoo thing was going, Joe Shadowby staking out training table. And I mean, that was the ultimate douchebag fest. I've never seen anything like that. And and I hope I never see it again, but if Ohio State ever has another scandal 
it'll be the same exact thing. It was like the, the Urban Meyer, Zach Smith stuff. I mean, round the clock, nonstop coverage. Um, but I think that the, hard, the other hard part with Michigan is that the timetable is way too loose. This isn't like something that's going to be coming down today or tomorrow or even next month. Um, but when it comes down, it's going to come down hard. So I think that's my opinion. Nevada, your thoughts on it? Michael Jarrett asks, um, what, what does basically Michigan have over ESPN and why has this not been reported by them basically at all? Uh, and they also realize that when tattoo game was going on, it was on ESPN all day, every day on repeat. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I've actually thought that this Michigan scandal just today, which was really, you know, the appetizer. This was really just the opening salvo. I thought it's gotten really, really wide circulation, I mean, way more circulation than I thought it would. I mean, it's on just about every platform everywhere. Now, I don't watch ESPN unless I'm watching something, so I don't really know. I, I think your answers are probably as good as anybody's. Um, but if they're not covering it that much or whatever on ESPN, they're making up for it on everybody else because everybody else in the world is covering this story. And, um, you know, I, 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 I'm actually surprised to the extent that this thing's been covered. Um, and, it, and again, it just goes to show you how impossible it was, the idea to even contemplate that Harbaugh was going to stay in college and face this. I mean, think about how laughable an assertion that. Can you imagine what would be going on right now at Michigan if Jim Harbaugh was still there and this was coming down? I mean, it, it was never going to happen. And, and all those Michigan beat writers and all those Michigan fans, and if they're honest, it's 99% of them, were all insisting that Harbaugh was staying, he signed an extension, he's a Michigan man, he's not going anywhere. And we had it. We're like, no, he's gone. And not only, not only did I tell you he was leaving, I told you where he was going to. And um, so, you know, now, it, like I said, it's laughable that anybody could have thought that he could have, because you're right, had he been there today, this thing would be, 50 times as big and and i thought it was i thought it got a lot of coverage today so um i was actually somewhat surprised by that yeah I, I, again i think him skating makes this because it's not like they can go outside shen beckler hall and see him walk into his car it's like they're not going to go cover him when he's with the chargers and you know he doesn't have to go out and give a big statement or anything so i think that's you know the, the fact that they're all gone takes a little bit of, it takes all the air out of the balloon um but they're still covering it because you know there's going to be uh, a price to pay very quickly here uh ref 49 thank you for the five it says do it Doreen, in terms of having another deal we want more free beers on nevada buck there were a lot of free beers to be had um and also i heard some of you guys did not get free beers so next uh time we do our next deal wear your gear again and i will get you your free beer but I've got my credit card statement and there's absolutely, uh, there were some beers that were free on Nevada. So Nevada, congrats. Uh, we spent some money, but we had a good time and Buffalo Wild Wings was very pleased. So again, they were a partner with us. And so it all worked out swimmingly and we'll also do another merch drop before the next one. Uh, Nevada, your thoughts, uh, next event when Michigan gets to the hammer, uh, are you excited to buy more free beers? Yeah, next next one is going to be free beer, and, and it, it absolutely we've already announced that it's going to be a you got to find Nevada, and the person who finds Nevada at the next thing will get some sort of special prize. So you have to go up to every person there in the Buffalo Wild Wings and ask them if they are Nevada Buck, and see if you can find them. And so it's going to be it's going to be great, kind of like a little uh, like a scavenger hunt slash free beer slash Michigan celebration thing. So just so much fun. I think it should be the the find Nevada. The Smash Nevada contest where you have to walk around like you're WWF on Nintendo 64 and you have a sealed chair and you have to hit the person and say, are you Nevada? And then when they say yes or no, I think yeah, that's what we should they do. Can't, you know? They can't lie. I, I promise I will not lie. I will not. If somebody comes up to me and they ask I'm Nevada, I will give them the right answer. But you got to find Nevada at this, at this next event. Oh, my God. That'll be great. You, you don't just come down from the ceiling like staying with the with, <laughs> you have like you'll look like the crow you'll have the no the black I'll, and white I'll, I'll like, on. Uh, no i like it when they had like multiple stings when they had like 20 stings coming out of the thing remember like they're they had all those stings that's what we'll have all these nevadas 
If people were asking, was Nevada here? I said, he is not here. I promise you. If he was here, I would I would tell every single person, that's him. Go say hi to him. Because <laughs> everybody wants to see Nevada. Kirk gets to the sit gold, down and, and the golden, chill. The golden, the golden bachelor. Nevada is talking to the golden bachelor. <laughs> They're talking big, big business. Uh, yes. Donald and Karen at Rossbeck, thank you for being Scoop Ultra. I appreciate the five. Uh, I thought the NCAA had no power. I love this. Isn't that what the delusional Michigan fans said? Yeah, because they're dumb. I mean, they, that's why they have general studies degrees, because they, they generally don't know anything. So, I uh, again, the NCAA is, has got great power, and when they want to wield it, they can, they can sanction people into the Stone Age. They can drive. Again, if people don't think the NCAA has power, go look up where Jeremy Pruitt is working right now. Jeremy Pruitt used to be the head coach of Tennessee. He was Nick Saban's D coordinator. Uh, I, and again, I'm not, not denigrating this at all. He went from being an SEC head coach, making a fortune. He's a PE teacher now, folks, because he got like a 10-year show cause because the NCAA actually does have power. So guess what? When you have like a 10-year show cause, you don't get to coach for 10 years. You get to chill. So no one's going to hire you to not work uh, because you have a show cause. And it's basically, it's a death knell to your college coaching experience. Um, and that's what he did. So... If you don't think the NCAA has power, I don't have to tell you because they can end your coaching career in heartbeat. Let me know when Connor Steins gets another coaching job in college football after basically doing everything he could to add value to Michigan and then getting smacked. Uh, Nevada, Donald and Karen Rossbach ask or, or say, they, they uh, and I quote, I thought the NCAA had no power. Isn't that what the delusional Michigan fans said? Your thoughts, Nevada? Yeah, it's, not, it's, it's, just, it's, it's denial. It's denial and and delusion, and you know, for, for Michigan fans, that's what makes it so delicious is that they're, you know, they they don't realize or they they some of them don't realize the trouble they're in, others realize the trouble they're in, but are going to try try to put on a brave face. But we all know what's coming, and, and we've we have told you guys every step of the way what was going to happen on this, every single step of the way, and every single step of the way, we've been right. And every single step of the way, the Michigan beat's been wrong. So, uh, you know, if you, if you want to know where somebody's going, just look where they've been. We've, we've had this story nailed. Uh, today was just another one of those days where we're like, we told you this was, was going to come on. We told you they were going to separate from Harbaugh. They're going to try to hang it on him. And I can't wait to see what the NCAA, because the NCAA is going to hand down the, the separate punishment for Harbaugh on Cheeseburger Gate, which is the first one. I can't wait to see that one because it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad, um, and it, 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 and for you as a fan, you're not looking at. Don't look at it as, oh, this is, uh, this is bad, and I'm looking for some sort of penalty to Michigan, right? Because because it's not going to hurt Michigan right now, but it would just give you an indication of where the NCAA and how the NCAA feels about Jim Harbaugh, and then you know by proxy Michigan. So that's what you should be looking for on this next set of penalties: is how badly does the NCAA come down on Harbaugh? That'll give you a really good idea of where they're at on this whole thing. I, I totally agree with you. I think it's going to be a fantastic shot clock. Todd, I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the five. Dennis Dodd just dropped on CBS. The NCAA threatened a suspension for Harbaugh, a.k.a. Harbaugh. They are gutting for this. Screw the blue. Nevada OH. I O. Now, are you surprised by that, Nevada, that uh, Dennis Dodd says that the NCAA threatened a suspension for Jim Harbaugh for Cheeseburger Gate? No, no, not at all. I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I think it's just it's it's one of those things where you know, I mean, it, it, it's bit lying to the NCAA is bad, and and when you do it, when you mislead the NCAA or you lie right to their face, and and you know. I, I, from pe talking to people in NCAA, from talking to the people in Indianapolis, they're like, he just, he literally just flat lied. And when they asked him the question about the illegal contact with him, he literally just sat there and lied and said, like, it didn't happen. And, you know, when that happens, hey, bad things are going to fall. So no, nothing surprises me when it comes to this. And nothing's going to surprise me going forward in terms of how bad it's going to get. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it is hilarious because, you know, I mean, but, like you said, Harbaugh knew he was out probably by the beginning of the season, and he just didn't care, and he acted like hey, the whole way. Before, 
before you get to the next question, because I, I, I meant to, to mention this, somebody mentioned that this is completely unrelated to this whole topic. So Nevada is just going off the rails on the reservation on this. Did you know yesterday when you mentioned like Uncle Lou, that Uncle, I thought that was Lou Holtz. And apparently Uncle Lou is something different than Lou Holtz. Did you know that? I had no idea. I thought Uncle Lou was I, Lou Holtz because that's who I was really to. I, I thought it was too. So apparently Uncle Lou is some parody account or something or something. And, I, and I'm like, really? oh, okay. I, I literally, and I followed college football for a living and I had never heard of this. So yeah, shame this, on Nevada. But I, I, I didn't get the joke. I got, the joke went way over my head. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's bad on me. I mean, I'm I'm kind of a Lou aficionado because I know I know of Lou Will, you know Lou Will's the the sixth man. He's in the Drake song. He's a basketball player. Like Lou Will's got, he's got specific wings at Magic City. So if you guys aren't hit Magic City, it's a strip club in Atlanta, and he uh, <laughs> he um, he's got like a lemon pepper like wings. So that's the only Lou that I recognize, other than Lou Gehrig, Lou Will, and uh. I think that's it. Is there any other Lou's oh. that are worth mentioning, Nevada? Sweet, sweet Lou, and also Sweet Lou. Um, we had we had an equipment guy, Louis Van Hoos, who did not like to give out a lot of gear. So we had like oh. the same one pair of socks for five years. It was oh, no. and Urban fired him. So Sweet Lou was no more once Urban showed up, which was uh, kind of hilarious. Uh, Ref forty nine, thank you for the five. Wouldn't criminal charges delay further delay NCAA punishment? Uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know. Um, potentially, but you know, I don't know how the NCAA would operate with that. Uh, Nevada, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, that's really in relate to Weiss and the Weiss investigation, which again is really one of the great untold stories in this whole thing, because you're talking about a guy that was on the fast track. You go look at his wiki and you look at what he was doing. This guy was like a big time college football coach and, you know, on his way to, to greatness and in college football, the NFL, whatever it is. And now he's just completely disappeared off the scene, 100 completely gone. And that should tell you how bad this criminal thing is with him right now. So, uh, no, I, I don't think that's going to hold the NCAA up because I've, I've always thought the stuff that they, the gambling cookies, the 50 hours of, uh, of practice footage and the other stuff that was on Weiss's computer, I wasn't quite sure, you know, the, the nexus between that and the NCAA investigation. I mean, the gambling stuff, yeah, for sure. The, the practice stuff, not as clear. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm, I, I don't believe the NCAA will, will hold it up pending the finality of the Weiss investigation by the FBI, but maybe they will, you know, and maybe that's something that, that delays us even further, but um, that'll be definitely something, you know, it'd be interesting to see when the next time he surfaces because he has gone into witness protection and has just fallen off the map completely. And that, that is super, super odd. Yeah. I think it's, uh, it's hilarious, but you know, we'll see again. Uh, at this point, I, I just, I feel really good about our positioning. Jim, OSU, thanks for the deuce. Uh, Michigan will get their rings at the spring game. Probably. I mean, it's about the time. Usually around April, May-ish is when you get the rings for the championship. So, great. I don't know if they'll be anything if they uh, get rid of their championship. But, you know, when they hand the rings out, it's not like they go and have stormtroopers confiscated from the players. But, you know, I think that's going to be probably part of the progression. Uh, Nevada, do you care if they get rings at the spring game if they strip the title? Well, it'll be great. Those things will be showing up at like pawn shops all over the country and stuff like that. And, you know, it'll be a great kind of novelty item. Be like, hey, I have this thing from this vacated national championship ring and stuff. So I think that's kind of cool. Good good for them. Yeah, totally great. Uh, Tom Gombar, thank you for the five. Nevada, well, Saturday's and Weiss investigations now also be probation violations with this verdict today. Your thoughts on that, Nevada? I just, man, I just don't know. You know, I, I just don't know. That's a, it's a, it's a great question. It's an interesting thing. I just don't know. And, um, you know, the Weiss thing, uh, you know, I, I know I just said it. I don't want to be the old guy that repeats himself, but it, it is one of the more fascinating capers in this whole thing, the, the whole sex crimes against minors, 
that's being alleged against him and how that provided a you know a predicate for the uh, the cyber crimes unit to look at his computer, go through the things, find the things that they did, notify U.S. integrity. So, uh, you know, I, I I think Weiss is kind of the key. But you, you think about what a spectacular fall from Grace Michigan has had with Weiss being arrested. The entire staff leaves. The new guy, Scruggs, comes in, gets hit with a DUI. Three weeks later, Denard Robinson gets hit with another DUI. I mean, what a cesspool. I mean, what a complete. And then we, we're not even throwing in the the lower level staff. I'm just talking about the 10 countable coaches guy. I'm not talking about the lower level staff that got banged at Walmart for trying to you know, meet an underage person, a la Chris Hansen, to catch a predator. I mean, what in the world is going on up at Michigan? I mean, if, can you imagine? I'm like, be honest, Kirk. If that was going on at Ohio State, as a as an alumnus, as a guy who's got your MBA from there, as an All American, treated, would you be freaking embarrassed if that was going on at Ohio State? Yeah, I mean that's I mean, that's the whole having integrity and the crux of the whole thing. And again, if this was going on at Ohio State, as someone else mentioned, uh, it'd be the biggest story in the country. It would lead every newscast. It would be the lead story on Colin Cowherd, on Stephen A. Smith, and all those guys because they would be incessantly beating Ohio State to death because that's what they do. Because, again, Ohio State brings ratings, huge ratings. So, you know, Michigan, they haven't been, you know, a thing for a long time, so they're kind of skating on this. But if this was Ohio State, oh, boy. Oh, boy, would it be something else because it's – uh. I've lived it. Like I said, I worked in the office with the Trussell thing. I was there for the Maurice Claret thing when Reese got kicked off the team and whatever. I mean, he tried to burn the program down. Like, they, they couldn't get enough of that, man. That was, you know, the, the, the front page of ESPN. That was, I mean, it was, every day was a circus. You know, Jim Brown's walking in the building. And, I mean, that was, uh, I was a freshman. And I'm like, what in the world is going on? And, People were sick in the building out because of you know Maurice. You know, he he went on college game day when he wasn't supposed to. I mean it was it was wild. But again, those guys I mean, ESPN let him come on stage. They didn't say, oh no, we didn't talk to your SID. Uh, they let him walk right up there and talk. And again, that's fine. I mean I didn't care, but it's just you know they knew that the ratings were going to come if Reese got up there. And again, I, I love Trussell Tattoo Gate more than any human being alive because I was in the building. I was there the morning Trussell got fired. I was there when Terrell, you know, when I told our idiotic coaches, hey, you probably should have Terrell Park in the back parking lot where the cameras aren't. And they had him ride that 300 ZX up there and they all took photos of it because, you know, again, our, our coaching staff at the time was dumb. And, you know, again, and, and again, they're not, and again, the people that work at the Woody Hayes are about as dumb as those guys were. Um, in terms of just being street smart and being with it and figuring out how to like work the media and actually do that type of thing. Um, but no, we had Terrell go out there like a sacrificial lamb and they took the photos and it was a disaster all the way around. You know, and Terrell, it, the funny thing is like when Terrell left that, the building that day, we never saw him again. And when Trust got fired, we had that team workout and then he was gone. Fick, Fick kicked him off the team or didn't talk to him or, Whatever whatever the schematics were behind it, we never saw Terrell in the Woody Hayes again. And that was that was wild. You know, and, and, and Luke really didn't want to talk to him. So it was you know, he was the new head coach and he was turning over a new leaf and Terrell was gonzo. So it was uh it was an interesting time. Thomas Taylor, what is up, brother? Thank you and your family for all the support on Saturday. It was great seeing you, uh, your wife and Andy Joe. Uh, thank you for the five. Nevada Buck will be the guy eating a smash burger uh, and oh, yeah, drinking no. a vodka tonic. Go oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See, you the, thing, the, thing, the, thing, like, the thing I'm going to do is I am going to snare a video poker machine and set it up because that'll be like bait. Ooh. That'll be like bait. Ooh. That'll be like when they got E.T. and they put the Reese's pieces on the ground, the little yeah, Reese's, yeah. and, and they, they lured E.T., like I'm gonna put a, a hundred play video poker machine with the oh, max man. bet, and I'm and, and, and I'm gonna I, you know what I'm gonna do to make it even better? It's gonna be a hundred play, and it's gonna literally the first hand will already be on three aces on the bottom. Oh man, I'll run. You'll, I'll, you'll, I'll, you'll, you'll see you'll I'll, see Nevada. Oh yeah, oh it'd be like putting 
like 10 flay mignons on the ground for like a bear or something. And then the bear comes running over and you drop the big trap on it. You put that yeah. hundred play poker, video poker. Ooh. Yeah. Vodka tonic, you know, the Oreo strawberry milkshake. Um, oh man. Man, yeah. all my favorite things, uh, all my favorite, all, all my favorite, all, I, I, I all would, in the same favorite I would, thing. I know. I, I would run like like <laughs> I'm a Forrest Gump from Manhattan Beach all the way to Columbus for that. Really. Oh, that, that's say a hundred play with with three aces on the bottom. Oh man, I'm running with the magic with the magic card. What was the little, little <laughs> card, little multiplier card, dream card? Yeah, you have the dream card at times uh, ten. Oh. Oh, man, that <laughs> so, so good. Let's go. So <laughs> let's go. Done. He'd be done. Uh, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna, have, we're gonna have that set up. We're gonna have that set up ready to thing. It'll say yeah. insert your hundred dollars here, and you get a times yeah. ten three aces on the bottom. Turn that hundred into you, about a hundred grand. Boom. You you sweet talker, you man. I can't. Let's, oh let's go. God, that'd be good. So let's, that's how you'll find him. I'm just saying. Yeah. Uh, I appreciate you, Thomas. Nevada, is that is that how they'll identify you'll be the guy eating the smash burger, drinking a vodka tonic? Yeah, I mean that, that probably is right. That that is by I will definitely be having the smash burger, probably between the uh, the the vodka tonic or or like a large coke. I don't I, I don't believe Buffalo Wild Wings has shakes, do they? If they had shakes, man, I'd be definitely drinking down a shake. But I don't think they. We do. can DoorDash those, dude. It's two thousand and twenty-four. Maybe I'll bring one in with me. Like, bring one in from one to like. Who makes yeah. a good shake in Columbus anyway? Does anybody in Columbus make a really good shake? I mean, we got like graters, handles. Like, we got all kinds of yeah. ice cream shops that are pretty good. Oh, that's good. That's good. You know, okay. we don't have an in-out I'm, burger, but we've got pretty much everything else. Does Thurman's make a shake? Do they have a shake, or are they just co- they're just cokes and I? Burgers? They probably do everything because anything that yeah. anything that can possibly make you fat, Thurman's will sell. I promise you. Yeah, I'm, I'm down, man. I love You're it. Down. I'm down. Oh my god, I love that. How to track track Nevada? Donald Karen Rossbeck, <laughs> thank you for the five. Thanks for being an ultra member as well. Uh, look at what they did to Penn State for Sandusky. Why is that any different than the Michigan coach caught with child porn on a work computer? Nevada OH. I O. I think that's part of your argument, Nevada. When they when they caught that and they had to, you know, go get the hard drives, like, what's the difference, Nevada? Well, I think in the eyes of the NCAA, the whole point was, you know, Penn State was selling the we've never had a scandal, we've never had the thing, and you know, Sand- the, you know, the Sandusky thing was known to Paterno. Paterno then covered it up. The AD participated in the cover-up. So it's a, a little different than Weiss because Weiss was not the head coach. Weiss wasn't the AD. Um, Weiss was just a guy that obviously was involved in allegedly sex crimes against minors. So a little different. Um, but to me, you know, it, it kind of buries the lead because what they did – it, it, the the Sandusky thing, while mm. abhorrent and horrible and terrible, that didn't really affect competitive advantage on the field. That didn't really directly affect games. What what Michigan did affected games. You know, it affected the outcome of the game. And um, so, while both both horrible, they're both horrible in different ways. And um, I think need to be you know, I mean, Penn State got nuked bad. Michigan needs to be have a similar nuking. And, um, and I, and I think that's really exactly what's going to happen. Yeah, I, uh, I agree. I think it's going to be, it's going to be a great day. And I can't wait for it to happen. Uh, well, Nevada, I think we can wrap this thing and make it for about almost 90 minutes. Appreciate all you guys in the chat. The chat is lit today. We have a lot of messages. Appreciate you guys. Uh, any final thoughts, Nevada? No, just, uh, I mean, what a great day. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how the transfer portal plays out. I, I think the general consensus now about the, the, the uh, transfer portal is that some of the concerns may have been overblown about the, uh, the impact and the number of guys jumping into the portal, which to me, as an Ohio State fan, uh, you know, in particular, and a college football fan in general, I think it's a very positive sign for college football that there's just like not a mass exodus of players. And, um, I think Ohio State's going to be very selective in the portal. I haven't seen anything yet that makes me kind of lean forward and go, well, we got to have that guy. But some interesting offensive lineman names uh, emerging. I'm not sure how much reality is that there is on the Keon Keeley thing. I think that was uh, – what's his name? Remember he used to be on our board. 
the guy that was like, he'd put stuff on Twitter. And, Here, Chugs? Um, Chugs. Yeah, that Chugs. was Chugs. Chugs. So I think that was just Chugs taking a swing. But Chris you know, I'll off. check. I, I'll, I'll check to see if, uh, if there's anything to the Ken Keeley thing. But um, been a pretty quiet portal thing. And, and again, I think that's a, that's I think that's a positive and a healthy sign for college football. So uh, we'll continue to monitor that. Doreen says Culver's is the best ice cream. They have something called concrete, but Doreen also jogs like 15 miles every day. So yeah, I don't know if concrete yeah, she does. is she's, feasible she's, for us. I think she's way too healthy for me to be even yeah. asking. I need a, I, I need don't a even know if con- concrete might not even have ice cream or milk in it. It might just be like wheat yeah. grass and like water, distilled yeah, water. I don't want that. I, I, yeah. I need some. I need a. I need a fat guy to chime in with the best shakes. So if yeah, you're fat, I mean, seriously, you like shakes, but give me, give me, a, give me a recommendation. Yeah, if something's called concrete, that doesn't even sound good. I trust no. you, Doreen, but I don't know. You run a little bit too much, and that's crazy. She said concrete. I'm like concrete. I'm like that don't sound good. You know, if I'm ordering one milkshake, I'm not gonna ask something that's called. They didn't have like they couldn't call, have like roof tar as the name of this yeah. shake. No, we got concrete, <laughs> roof tar, something like, a, like a little more descriptive, so, soldering iron or something. Like, <laughs> ooh, that sounds delicious. Let me give me a give me a large soldering iron. That sounds great. Oh, gosh. Oh, all right. Well, appreciate you, Dorian. Let's wrap this show up. Appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. The next, uh, <laughs> I love it's custard. It is awesome. Um, I trust you. I got a long story on custard about California. Nevada's trying to open a ice cream stand out there. And the word custard does not fly in Southern California. We found that out very, very quickly. Um, but I appreciate you guys as always. Thank you guys for kicking it with us. If you guys enjoy this content, please leave us a like. Click subscribe. Also, click that little alert bell. Again, we appreciate you guys kicking in with us each and every night. Uh, shout out where you guys are watching from. Shout out who you guys are watching with. Again, if you guys want to do another meetup, uh, when would you like to do it? NFL draft, a little bit further down the road. Um, what would you change? What did you love? Let me know. Uh, please leave it in the comments. Uh, or you can send me an email, bugescoop.gmail.com. Leave your name in town if you wish to opine. We appreciate you guys so very much, and we love your feedback. So uh, the outing, I thought, went incredibly well on Saturday, and I think a lot of you guys uh, that didn't make it will want to come to the next one, so I'm excited to meet even more of you. I think it'll be a fantastic time. Uh, With that being said, as always, thank you so much, Buckeye Nation. Thank you, Scoop family. We will talk to you guys tomorrow at 7 o'clock. Be ready to rock. Go Bucks.